Every time I've used the audio transcribe feature in Premiere Pro, I've found it to be pretty accurate, but inevitably it will make some mistakes. To improve the accuracy, the key is to start with the best quality audio that you can and choose the best settings in Premiere Pro. That way the app AI can concentrate on what's being said and not be distracted by anything else. With that said, let's get into 10 ways to improve speech to text accuracy in Premiere Pro by improving your audio recordings. 1. First, consider where you're going to record. You want somewhere with the least amount of background noise. Avoid setting up close to noisy aircon, computer fans or other noisy backgrounds. Also, avoid being up close to hard flat surfaces like walls, windows and mirrors, since sound reflections can cause problems for you. 2. Once you have a good location to record in, position the microphone so that it's close to your subject's mouth. This will ensure their voice is clear and the background noise is minimized. By keeping the microphone close to the subject's mouth, their voice will appear quite loud. So when you set the recording level, you'll need to bring down the input level, which will naturally make the background noise quieter, while keeping the dialogue nice and clear and at the correct level. Lavalier microphones, also known as lapel mics, can be placed four to eight inches from your subject's mouth and can even be hidden under clothing. If you need freedom of movement, consider using a wireless microphone system or use a headset microphone. Another option is to mount a microphone on a boom arm and have it positioned so that it's close to the mouth, but just out of shot. However, try to avoid mounting a microphone on your camera, since even with a shotgun mic, you're adding extra distance between the subject and the microphone. 3. Next, consider the polar pattern of the microphone you're going to be using. The more directional it is, the less off-axis background noise it will pick up. Most lavalier microphones are omnidirectional, which means that they pick up sound from all directions. But that's okay because you can normally place them very close to your subject's mouth and turn down the recording level, which, as I've already said, will help cut the background noise. But with a little more distance between the subject and the microphone, you'll need to use a microphone with a cardioid or supercardioid polar pattern. These are directional microphones and will reject some of the sound from the sides and rear of the microphone. 4. If you're recording an interview, make sure each speaker has their own microphone and that you can set the recording level correctly on each channel. This will ensure each person is recorded at the perfect level, even if one of them is speaking more quietly than the other. But with multiple microphones, you will need a camera that has more than one audio input. Alternatively, record the sound on a digital audio recorder, like a Zoom H4n, or get a mini audio mixer for your camera. 5. With the microphone sorted, turn your attention to your recording level. If your recording level is too low, you'll need to boost it in post-production, which might make the noise generated by your camera's preamps more noticeable. But don't set the input level too high either. You don't want to clip your audio and risk recording distorted sound. Not only will it sound bad, but it'll also be more difficult for Premiere Pro to transcribe. 6. Once you're ready to record, protect your microphone from the wind. Wind noise sounds ugly and can mask what your subject is saying. So add some wind noise protection to your microphone, like a furry dead cat or wind muff. As a last resort, switch on the wind cut filter on your camera, assuming it has one, of course. 7. Vocal pops and blasts can also spoil your recording. These are caused by plosives when you say words that start with a P or a B. The fast-moving air in your breath overwhelms the microphone element, causing it to produce a blast sound. To avoid the problem, add a pop filter or dead cat to your microphone. If you're using an omnidirectional lavalier mic, point the mic capsule downwards so that it doesn't point towards the speaker's mouth. The fast-moving air won't hit the microphone element, 
but since the microphone is omnidirectional, the speech will be picked up by the mic. 8. Despite your best efforts, what if you can't avoid some background noise? Well, you could consider cleaning up your audio. If you have Audacity, which is free, or Adobe Audition, which requires a monthly subscription, you can use the built-in noise reduction effect. For even better results, try adding effect plugins to your recording door. WavesInc sell NS1 Noise Suppressor and Clarity VX. Both are very effective at removing repetitive sounds. 9. Room echo or reverberation on dialog can also hinder Premiere Pro. Fortunately, plugins like Deverberate 3 from Acon Digital do a good job of removing reverberation. In fact, cleaning both room echo and background noise will improve the audio generally, even if you don't intend to transcribe speech to text. 10. Don't confuse Premiere Pro with non-dialogue audio. Before clicking the Transcribe button in Premiere Pro, make sure the app only analyzes the audio from tracks with dialogue and not tracks with music and sound effects in your mix. Unfortunately, you can only choose one single track or the whole mix to analyze. So, if you've got dialogue on more than one track, choose Mix and then in the sequence, Mute any tracks that contain non-dialogue audio. 11. And finally, a bonus tip. Choosing the correct language model in Premiere Pro will make a difference in the accuracy of the transcription. Premiere Pro provides several language models. Even with English, you'll find that there's more than one option. If you don't have the language already on your computer, choose and download the language model you need. Hopefully you found this useful. If so, please like this video. It really does help me here on YouTube. If you would like to see more content on recording your own audio and videos, please subscribe to this channel. You'll also find in-depth articles on my website, DIYVideoStudio.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me again soon.